Our first caller is Luis from Florida. Luis, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey there, guys. So um, I'm actually calling because I needed your help with something. I form, uh, first of all, I want to thank you guys for everything that you do. I actually form part of the Coach to Coaches uh, group with NCI and Mind Pump. Uh, and I'm really grateful for everything that you guys have brought to uh, to the table in the, in the last couple of sessions. Um, now, my question basically is regarding my own personal uh, fitness journey. So I'm a really big fan of advanced calisthenics and gymnastics. So I started off with gymnastics, learning handstands, front levers, back levers, uh, iron cross, all these more advanced technical moves. But uh, I'm also a fan of aesthetics. So it was very hard for me at the start trying to combine these because I would basically do a bodybuilding routine every single day with a, ca a calisthenics gymnastics routine. And my body just really took a toll. Everything changed once I um, started using anabolic. And instead of the trigger sessions, I did light calisthenics, uh, handstand skill sets in, in my days off. And it all was very beneficial, very helpful. And I was able to get both the aesthetics and the skill improvements uh, with calisthenics. Um, now, my problem is now I'm now that I'm done with anabolics, I want to go into more of a strong man or a powerlifting type of program, but I'm not too sure how to incorporate calisthenics with that because I also don't want to lose the abilities and the skills with all these gymnastic movements. Uh, how would you guys approach that? Yeah, that's great, a that's great question. Really good question. First off, uh, thanks for for uh, for saying what you did about NCI. That's been a really good experience for us working with. Uh, great coaches, and um, you know we've gotten great feedback from it, so I appreciate that. Now, here's a deal with what you're talking about. Uh, you want to understand or consider that learning a skill takes a lot more effort and practice than maintaining a skill. So, for example, so maybe a silly example, but I think it illustrates what I'm saying. Learning how to ride a bike takes a lot of practice and a lot of effort, and, and then keeping the skill of riding a bike, for the most part, if you ride it here and there, you'll probably keep it. Um, now, you're talking about you know calisthenics at a pretty high level, but it also sounds like you've been doing them for a very long time. I think if you want to maintain your ability, uh, just practice it on a regular basis. Now, don't do it as a workout, but rather just on a daily basis, practice the skills that you don't want to lose. And that should be enough to prevent you from losing those abilities too much. Now, you won't be as good as you would be if you train them hard all the time. But if you're doing like power lift or strong, and then you're practicing the calisthenics on a daily basis, when I say practice, I mean literally it's not a workout. You're practicing the skill. You're getting up on the bar. You're making sure you could still do the movement. I think if you do that on a regular basis along with strong or MAPS power lift, I think you should probably be okay. I, I, I actually really like how you're doing this. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I think this is probably the direction that it, I mean, it, it it all matters to like how much of the gymnastic skills that you still want to be good at, right? And I think if you want to keep them uh, at the level that you're at, which is, sounds like a pretty high level, I think your strategy is actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. And what's kind of neat about all the programs is most all that, at least all the ones I can think of right now, top of my head. We've built them with these, uh, you know, you have your foundational days and then you have these, you know, in strong, for example, their work sessions. And so I would just drop my work sessions and I would do my calisthenics there instead. So you could follow strong and basically do the same thing that you did with anabolic. And I think you would see great success. I, I mean, I love what you do. And by the way, too, okay, and, I, there, and I, I would love to see you do strong and do that. But when we wrote these programs, we did write them to where you could run it back. So you don't necessarily have to. I know, obviously, it's financially beneficial for all of us for you to go through every single program. But the truth is, they, they've been programmed in a manner that you could run anabolic multiple times, you know, one after, one after another and be fine because of the way that we phased it. So... Nothing wrong with how, you, how you're training right now at all, but if you do want to move into something more like strong or power lift, I would just take the off days and I would incorporate my gymnastics. Yeah, again, I, I want to echo that, um, you know, in terms of like how you're structuring it, I like. Um, however, I wanted to kind of pose another sort of option only because I know some of these movements are like super intense, right? So a lot of a lot of times they they devote all of your effort your body gets really taxed sounds like you got taxed doing it that way 
Um, what if you flipped that, right? So you take anabolic and you do the trigger sessions in between your skills only because if, if that's your goal at the time, so you can kind of, you know, really hyper focus on, um, you know, building up that skill, but also like getting uh, the recovery, the the hypertrophy benefits of, of the trigger sessions in between, um, you know, trying that as well. If, if, if that's a little bit less taxing, you know, more moderate intensity, um, you know, giving that a go. Yeah, Luis, I think the bottom line to understand, and you know this as a coach working with clients, what they do the most of is where they're going to gain most of their, I guess, benefits or results, right? So if you do, if, if endurance training takes up the majority of your time, then most of your progress is going to be connected to endurance. If most of your training is, you know, devoted to strength or power or hypertrophy, uh, that's where you're going to see uh, most of your of your results. Um, so if you want to continue to improve at calisthenics, you're probably going to have to make that the cornerstone of your workout. But if your goal is to improve your aesthetics more than your calisthenic skill, but you just want to be able to maintain some of those foundational skills, then the path that you're on is is I, in my in my opinion perfect. You know, you follow one of our programs and then just practice. <laughs> those calisthenics on a regular basis because it's the practice that maintains the skill. Now, if you want to get better at it, it it's not necessarily going to work. But honestly, if you're if you're good enough at, at those calisthenics to the point where you could a few times a day hop up and practice a few moves, you know, get on a handstand and hold that and come down, nothing too super intense, but just practice it throughout the day, just doing that, your skill – will probably maintain uh, pretty well. But that's there's always a give and take with training. He always could, he could do a two one also, like with like anabolic the way that's structured. You could go a two two days of foundational, one day of gymnastics, right. and then actually do the trigger sessions. Right, mm -hmm. right. So there's, I mean, I, for sure, the where you're the what you're doing, I think is is great, and you can play with that. And I think and you could actually change throughout the program as you're going through like if you feel like oh, okay i'm doing more than enough gymnastics you could scale that back to sal's point and mm -hmm. do more of the bodybuilding stuff so i mean i think you actually get the concept and i think that almost every program we have is very easy for you to just drop a day of strength training because yeah. most of the program the only thing that would the program i would tell you not to do with what you're doing is split because split, we break up the body parts, and then it's you're, so bodybuilding focused. It yeah. almost doesn't give you too much. Yeah, room. and then you're also going to end up sacrificing a muscle group if you do that. Where yeah. all the other programs are are mostly full body, so you could literally drop one of the full body days off and yeah. do a, a full gymnastics. Well, even day. yeah, performance was really set up so you you have those you know core foundational days, but in between is mobility. But you know there's room there to add in your skills, so you maintain yeah. those skills for your specific sport, and you just want to. <laughs> structure it in a way where it's kind of moderate to low intensity, but you're drilling, uh, you know, those skills. So if you can do that within the gymnastic realm, you know, that's totally an option. Yeah. One more thing to keep in mind of, Luis, if you're building muscle and gaining weight, that will make your calisthenics more challenging and it, it will likely reduce your skill because, you know, when you're lifting weights, if you get bigger, you're fine. It doesn't really change anything. But when you're lifting your body, uh, now you've just made that exercise uh, more challenging and the shape of your body has changed and the leverages have changed a little bit. So keep that all in mind, but uh, it's it's not that big of a deal. You could always go back uh, to what you were doing before if you yeah, really miss it. It's easy to lose muscle. It, it's not hard. <laughs> so I hope that yeah, helps. Yeah, I wanted to really thank you guys. One of the great benefits I got from doing anabolics and uh, the skills uh, days on my days off was that exactly that my weight was basically around the same i was eating a pretty high amount of calories but my body composition completely changed oh, beautiful. And i think awesome. i benefited so much from that that routine because before before tackling and doing anabolics i was doing basically what um, adam was just saying i was doing uh, a bodybuilding routine five six times a day and on those same days where i would work out i would yeah. do a 30 45 minute oh, skill session and my body was just yeah. hurting yeah too much by the way when you say anabolics uh just for the listener he's he's talking about maps anabolic <laughs> <That's Yeah. steroids. laughs> it sounds like you're talking about taking anab <laughs> anabolic although it looks like you're on steroids when you run that program <laughs> that's why it's, the YouTube that's why it's named maps anabolic so th thanks louis by the mm -hmm. way do you have uh map strong or maps powerlift do you have either one of those programs i don't have uh strong 
Uh, All right. How is how is this split on strong? Is it similar to anabolics? Yeah. Is it like a three day a week. Yep. Yep. Very yeah. similar. We'll, so we'll send it over. to We'll you. send that over to you. Thanks for calling in. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. Thanks, guys. No problem. See you on the yeah. inside, guy. Yeah, I really enjoy these coaches and trainers that mm -hmm. we get to. Um, you know, I, when we all ran gyms and stuff, it was one of my favorite things to do was to train coaches and trainers. And we, you know, it's we haven't done that obviously because we have the podcast. So it's great to do this and work with people on the front line. I actually enjoy that more than uh, training. That was why I, why I was quick, why I was quick to take mm -hmm. the fitness manager role was I was actually kind of burnt out of training clients, 10 clients a day, mm -hmm. was excited to actually train professionals. So for most of my career, that's what I spent most of my time doing yeah. was actually coaches. Yeah, but you know, again, it's like when you design your routine, a big mistake is to try to do everything so you can get everything and lose nothing. Mm -hmm. And you are going to <clears throat> overtax your body and you'll end up with less of everything. Right. Your best bet is to prioritize one type of goal, make that the cornerstone of your routine and then supplement that. And then it may change and that's okay. Right. And, and yeah, and, and fluctuate it. Like, so you, like, do a different focus for a while and then come back to it. You know, the main goal that you have, but you know, mm -hmm. that way you keep from plateauing. I love what he's doing though. I mean, I think that his strategy of, well, he's obviously a trainer. He knows yeah, he has an idea. Yeah. No, I mean, too. when he was laying out what he had done, he I has think a great structure. Yeah, yeah. No, there's created. nothing. And there's nothing wrong. That's why I wanted to say too, there's nothing wrong with you running. If like you got shredded, you look awesome. You could still do your calisthenics. Yep. You're loving the program. Fuck. You could run it back. But I'm glad you brought up the point too that you know he's going to lose something if he keeps building, right? Because it sounds like he still wants to keep building. Well, you try mm -hmm. try doing a you know a, a handstands and you know iron cross or whatever the stuff you was with when your legs got bigger. Well, the, I, well, <laughs> yeah. even yeah. Uh, you, you know you we talk grow with it with your skills. You know we talk so much about the whole you know ass to grass and then the the you know squat and scroll thing. Like as I get bigger and bigger, it becomes really difficult for me to sit comfortably down in that position. So there's definitely a sweet spot of yeah. getting bigger and still keeping my mobility you know yeah, yeah justin's ass to grass squats are like so short range of motion now because his cakes are just they're heavy <laughs> yeah it's easy